Mel, by doing what he's doing, eight for 21 with seven extra base hits in six games. You noted the two homers. He is off to a fantastic start at AAA. He's doing what you want a top prospect to do. He's showing all his talent, and he's telling the Orioles, I'm about ready. Remember, he got to AAA late last year, so he is knocking on the door very loudly, just like he hits the baseball loudly. Big exit velocities. And what's on the stat sheet right now, Mel, that is fantastic trend start for Stowers, and it's just a start. Strikeout rate last year, 34%. He knew that was too high. In six games this year, 14.8. Way down. So he struck out a lot in springs training. He struggled in Florida. But the kid has gotten off to a great start. He's cut down on his swing and miss. And uh, the young man with the blonde hair from Stanford is looking pretty good right now. <laughs> Well, and a lot of people would want to point that out that, you know, that they won't want to give him a chance because of what they saw in Sarasota. How much of that do you think, though, was just the pressure that he was feeling of, of being a little starstruck of being around the big leaguers like that? I think it was some of that it had to be. I mean, you know, these kids work all their life to get their major league chance. And then a spring training game can feel like the World Series when you're a young kid trying to make an, an impression. But the Orioles are not going to focus on that. They're going to focus on his start at Triple A, how he has cut down on the swing and miss. He's a very cerebral kid. When I interviewed him last year in the buoy, he tremendously connected with Ryan Fuller, who was the hitting coach there then, who, of course, is one of two hitting coaches here now. So I think what's being preached at the big league level, Stowers has been there, done that on the farm last year. So he's bought into what they did there. And, Melanie, you want your top prospects to not rest on their laurels with stats, to recognize a shortcoming and work on it. And that's what Stowers did with cutting down on the strikeouts. And, again, it's only a six-game sample at AAA. But uh, Stowers power is for real on the farm right now. Well, and for Stowers, he's finding it a lot quicker because the games are going quicker right now. Of course, the pitch clock has been introduced to the minor leagues. And when you look at the average time of game and where it's at right now, that two and a half hours is right about the pace. Del Marva experienced extra innings last night and also still had a 230 game with only one hiccup along the way. Really, where do you think this takes the direction of the game, especially for some of these top prospects? In the last few days, over the weekend really, uh, they, they cracked down on the pitch clock in the minor leagues. 18 seconds with no one on base, 14 with runners on, and they really cracked down. Like they were calling automatic strikes on batters who dawdled around and didn't get in the batter's box. Major enforcement, they upped the ante, they told the minor league players the first week of the season, we're giving you time to settle in, then we start fully enforcing. And they drastically cut down on times, Mel, like 25 minutes a game on minor league baseball. So these improvements are probably coming to MLB at some point. You take that with pitch calm, with the catchers and the signals, and that's speeding up things. So I do think MLB has in the long haul the next year or two some things in place that may make games move at a faster pace.